Thanks everyone for popping by. This is a new video that I'm recording about uh, Superbase and what I'm doing here is my Superbase project. For those who have, I'm assuming if you're here but you've used Superbase before, but um, basically what I'm doing is I am wrapping Superbase API calls into uh, hooks to be used with Vue.js. So the motivating factor for this was I was making these same API calls over and over again throughout my application. And there's specific things that I wanted to kind of wrap and I wanted it to be reactive. And so the best way that I found to do it was to create hooks. So look, first let me show you the app and then I'll kind of show you how the hooks come to play. So this is my application right now. Um, I have a hook that when utilized will just query a bucket and it's not query a table and return the results. That's how I'm rendering this. I've created a hook to select a specific item from a table. And that's how I'm rendering this detail page. I have a hook that will delete a specific item from a page. I've also added hooks that query all the items in a bucket. So that's what this does. And then I've also added a hook that allows you to upload an item specifically to a bucket. Um, yes, I know you can do all of these with a regular API call to Superbase, but what I've done is I've created reactive variables. So if we look at my home page here, I have a set of reactive variables that I use to indicate when the app is loading. It dynamically lets me know if any errors are generated and it dynamically gives me back data from my calls. So if we look at this first home page here, let's make a little bit more room. Um, and also let me not forget, please, if you like this content, please make sure you like and subscribe. I'm very, very close to um, passing the threshold to actually become a YouTube partner and finally be able to figure out how to generate even a little bit of um, value off of my uh, videos. So I just need the folks, please make sure you watch my videos, please make sure you like my videos, subscribe to the channel, share them to other folks so I can get my viewers up. All right, so now back to the code. So. I'm going to go over that high level stuff. I'll post all the source codes. You can go through it. Please feel free to ask questions um, if you don't understand what I'm doing. So let's talk about the basic ones first. This use query is a hook that I've created. You add it inside the setup section of your application. And what it does, it does two things. It gives you the ability to onload to just immediately execute this query. It will set, it will, um, set this reactive variable to loading when it's loading and set it to false when it's not, it'll return an error, and then also it returns the data. And since these are reactive, what will happen is that um, you can actually use them directly in your template. So if you see up here in my template, um, when I don't have a user, what it will do is it will, uh, right down here where I have some data, once this data value gets set, it'll automatically start to loop through them and render each one of these items on the page. And I'm doing that with this uh, use query hook. And the other thing is use query hook does if you there's a you can see there's a parameter set to auto right now it's auto so that means it will automatically execute the query at startup but you can set that to false and then i return this do query um, function which just so if you want to click a button to execute the query you can call this function do query when you click the button it will execute the query let's kind of hop inside of this um, hook all the hooks pretty much follow the same pattern so let's look at this select hook and kind of close this out. Um, here's the key is the reactive variables that I've set up at the top that get returned. Um, I have a use client hook. This basically sets up Superbase and gives me back the Superbase client, which is how I do all the things I need to do. This is the function that executes the query. On executing a query, we want to set our reactive variable loading to true. I'm just log in some information on the tables. And then I execute the Superbase function here. And I get the, res the results back, the data and the error information, and I set them to these reactive variables. Um, these reactive variables are returned from my hook, so you have access to them inside of your page. So you can see right here. And like I said, since they're reactive, they're being updated, um, and so of course it allows my UI to be updated. So if this was like a longer query, you would see my loading appear, but right now, because of just how fast it happens, you can just see it for a split second. Um, so that's my um, select query. Let's take a quick look at the use auth query. I mean, sorry, the use auth hook. The use auth hook, uh, I'm not really happy with the way I've implemented it now. I'll probably make some changes to it, but basically what it does when you utilize this, 
um, it, rep it uses the use client hook. The use client hook returns a Supervase client. But this hook, it sets up a listener for authentication change, and it has this reactive variable that gives you the session information when um, the auth state changes. So at startup, we check and we see we have a session, we assign it. Since this is reactive, once again, anyone listening to this anywhere in the application will know that we actually have a session to use. And then I just return these functions. This is the stuff that I think I need to change and make a little bit cleaner, but it works for now. So that's my auth hook. Let's close out my auth hook. So the way my app is currently working is at setup, I use my use auth hook to see if I have a session, and then I get my login function and my logout functions. Um, I'm executing this query every time, which I probably shouldn't. I probably want to kind of listen to uh, make sure that I actually have a, um, a session, and then if I have a section session, execute the query. But I'm not doing that right now. So I use my use auth hook, I check for a session, if I look up at my template, you can see I have this big if statement here. So this big if statement says, if I have a session and I have a user, then basically show this UI. If I don't, show my login container, and then my login container allows you to enter email password. When you, we got some thunder here. And when you click the do login button, you can scroll down and you can see, where's my do login? I call my do login function, and then my do login function authenticates the user. When the authenticated user gets logged in, my session, my, this, this reactive variable then will now have a session. And then since the session is in place, this will now be true. And so the UI will change and it will render this information. Um, I already discussed the query, but the, also what I've added is the ability to select one specific item from the database. So let's close our home page. Let's close our select. Let's save that change. And let's look at our detail page. And what our detail page does, it uses a hook I created called query by ID, which does what it says. It gets a specific item by its ID. You just put this in your page, you give it the product, you give it the ID, it'll execute the query. These reactive variables you have access to to update your UI. But then I've also added this delete by ID, which is, uh, which Similar to the other one, but once again, it gives you a function so you can control when the delete happens. All of these just basically have the same uh, super base, the same structure of utilizing a super base client function inside of the hook and giving you access to reactive variables. I can delete this because I'm not really doing anything with this data. And so this allows me to a query a specific product. I mean, I query a specific element from a table and this allows me to delete a specific element. And if you look on the do delete, you pass in the table and the ID. And then um, since it's part of this hook, I have, I have these reactive variables. So it's, it lets me know when delete is loading. It lets me know, you know if I get a delete error. And I can, what am I doing? Down here, you can see I'm setting my loading and my error based on those values. So you can utilize them to kind of up update your UI to indicate when you're loading or if you've got an error that happened. And so that's the select one and the delete one. And then kind of the last one that I have here is this um, add, is this set of add image um, hooks. So let's go to the add image page. And so I'm using this select bucket, which gives you a list of all of the objects in a bucket. And then I have a upload um, hook. So you can see, let's look at the select one first. So just use select bucket, pass in a bucket, you pass in a path. Similar to the other select, you pass in an auto or not, so it controls whether or not you want it to automatically execute, which I have set to true. Or if you set it to false, it gives you, it returns this do query function, and you can call it do query function when you, when you need to, to kind of query all of the uh, items in the bucket. And then the other one I add is this use upload. And what you do is you, you uh, excuse me, to, to set up the hook, you pass it a specific bucket, and then you can also pass it a default set of options. These options come from Superbase. Um, but then it also gives you this do upload function. And what the do upload does is you can pass it a blob or a path to a um, image, and then you give it a file name. And then the function is smart enough to, let's go back to my do upload hook. 
So what this hook does is it this hook will take a look and it will determine if the blob is a string. If it's a string, it'll attempt to do a fetch and convert it to a blob. Otherwise, it just takes the blob as is, passes it through, and calls a super base function. Once again, you can see I'm taking additional options that you could pass in if you want to overwrite the default set. And as usual, since these are reactive variables, um, they can um, you can get the updates to your UI. So let's just quickly walk through this one. I can choose a file to subscribe ping, it's pretty obvious. And that got uploaded right now. I'm not kind of reloading the page and upload. So if I kind of refresh, and where did it go? You can see my subscribe image got uploaded to Superbase. And then we got a list of it. So like I said, this is just a quick overview of them. Um, all the source code to be updated. This is a pretty cool project to implement. I'm certain I'll get to use this in other projects. Please be sure to give me your feedback and your thoughts. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.